What's going on guys? Jeff here from The Hook of Tackle. Today, we're gonna to be talking about throwing big swim baits coming this fall and early winter. It's gonna be a great time of the year to be throwing some of these larger grade swim baits to catch some really large bass, whether you are fishing shallow water or deep water. And so today I'm gonna to kind of explain my thought process and ideology of how, when, and where I'm fishing some of these swim baits. So if you guys are ready, let's get right into today's video. Welcome to The Hook of Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. Welcome back guys, my name is Jeff. Here at the Hookup Tackle, Jeffrey the King on Instagram, being filmed by my good buddy Jeffrey the King on Instagram. We are at the Hookup Tackle USA. So today we're going to be talking about big swim baits, something that I'm decently versed on, and we're going to be talking about this time of the year. We are, you know, late October, early November, and depending on where you live in the country, it's obviously going to be colder in some places and warm in others. Down here in Arizona, it's kind of still in the 70s, 80s, with the lows being in the low to mid 50s. So it's starting to cool down, but it's not too significant. And basically this time of year, what's happening is you're having these random cold snaps that will come in where it drops to like the low 40s and it only gets up to around 60 or 65-ish. And that's changing the water temp, the water is cooling. A lot of the fish are starting to get more active. They are moving from their summertime areas and they're just moving shallow. They're following the bait. They're putting themselves in great positions to feed on some of these larger baits like Gizzard Chad. Some places in the country, they sock trout this time of year as well. You got that, you got like American Chad. So these fish are looking to feed up. They're trying to bulk up because winter's coming, they know it. And during winter, they don't stop eating in winter. They just don't have the metabolism and the energy to really spend chasing around fish. So this is a great time of year to really throw whatever you want to catch them on, really. You can fish soft baits deep. You can fish shallow. You can fish bluegill style baits, shad, trout. Like, it's a great time of year if you're trying to catch some big bass on a wide variety of different baits. So let's kind of get right into it. So there's obviously different lakes out there. Some lakes have grass, some lakes have deeper rocks, some have trees and so on and so forth. So I'm kind of trying to give examples of a few different lakes that I've fished out here because luckily enough out here in the desert we have a couple different lakes and they set up a little bit differently even though they're like really close and kind of similar but one of the lakes that we used to fish out here on Saguaro Lake it had grass a lot of grass too it's so those fish really liked relaying to grass and grass lines and stuff like that. And once the water starts cooling, a lot of that grass starts to die off and you're not having these giant fields of grass. It's more isolated lanes or pockets and it's a lot easier to dissect. And what will happen is once that grass starts dying off, the bluegill and the shad and whatever else was living in there, it's got to be moving towards these pockets of grass and so what I'm looking for is finding where the grass is and I'm fishing normally a soft bait in it. Back in the day I used to fish the 10 inch mag draft a lot in that grass especially the way that I rig it. I rig it a very certain way. I'll leave a link to the video if you guys want to know how I rig my mag drafts but the way that I rigged it allowed me to pretty much fish this bait into the grass and kind of just rip it out like you would like a sprinter bait. It's pretty much the same exact bite as that, but you're just using a 10 inch swim bait instead of like a half ounce spinner bait. So basically I would either graph the grass, visibly look at the grass if the water was clean enough or if the grass was still high enough. 
I find out where the grass is, I position the boat well enough to where I can bomb a cast out, past the grass spot or down the lane, work the bait, and once I got into grass, what I would do is just snap the bait out until it's free and I could feel like there's no more grass on it and keep reeling and you're gonna get some really gnarly bites. Especially from those larger grade fish because those fish are sitting around these grass spots because there's not as much of a field of grass. They're very specific and it's a lot easier to target those fish. And so this is a great time of year to try and catch some grass fish because once the grass dies, then they start to kind of just fan out and look to see what areas they want to sit in. Sometimes they go to rocks, sometimes they go find a offshore structure to go sit on after the grass is kind of dying. It just depends on exactly where the grass is. So fishing grass can be a really fun one. You can also fish, you know, a bluegill style bait around that grass as well since they're feeding on bluegill. So it doesn't matter if it's like glide bait or if it's a multi-piece bait. Just a bluegill profile swim bait can get you some gnarly, gnarly bites when you're fishing around that grass. Now, switch it up and I go fish Canyon Lake. Canyon Lake is more of a rocky, deeper, steeper kind of lake. And when it comes down to fishing that lake, I found that this time of year, it does seem that like the bluegill are pretty active and you can find bluegill up shallow for a majority of the lake. And this was a great time of year to fish a bigger glide bait and a profile of a bluegill. So we were fishing, you know, any type of glide bait that had just a bluegill profile. This just so happens to be the depth bull shooter. We were catching them on the Hiroshima Godzilla. We were catching them on the Matt Lures Magnum Gill. We were catching them on quite a few different gill style, but I only fished it because I noticed we were seeing a lot of bluegill up shallow. And every morning you would see bass, even just right at the ramp, the bass were just chasing, crushing bluegill right on the bank, right at the ramp. And we're like, okay, they're feeding on gills. That's still a gill style bluegill bait. And they absolutely crush it. One of my biggest bass ever in my life actually came this time of year on a big glide bait that was in the bluegill profile, the Hiroshima Godzilla. It was an awesome, awesome fish like a low nine pounder boat flipped it on accident because I thought it was a lot smaller than that but it just goes to show like we were up there that same day early in the morning nothing was biting it was weird so we went down lake we caught some fish and we made the decision to run back up my buddy Phoenix as soon as we got up there he caught one on the mat lures and then probably 10 minutes later I catch that nine pounder and it was just different times of the day those fish will move up but it just goes to show like you can catch either a three pounder in some of these spots or you can catch a nine, 10 pound fish in these spots if you're fishing it at the correct time. And so a bluegill style bait, whether it be a glide bait or a multi-piece bait is absolutely killer in and around grass or rocks. It kind of doesn't really matter as long as you're seeing bluegill up shallow or they are, you know, plucking at the surface eating insects throw a bluegill style bait and you're gonna get some big, big bites this time of the year. And then if your fish are mostly feeding on shad, whether it be thread fin or they are feeding on, you know, bigger gidget shad, luckily in our lakes, we have gidget shad that get quite large. So this time of the year, you're gonna see a lot of guys throwing big glide baits. The Depth 250 is a great one. I loved throwing the Hinkle Trout back in the day as well. Anything with a bigger profile like this is gonna get you some really big bites this time of the year. It's got the drawing power, it's a big meal for these fish. Those fish are, they're still jazzed, they're juiced to actually eat something, chase it down and crush it. So throwing a big glide bait, it's got the drawing power to get those fish to come out and commit to it. And it's just this time of year, they're just so darn aggressive. The water's cooling. They are trying to feed right before winter, and it's just a great time to fish some of these bigger glide baits. And it's pretty much the same thing. I'll fish a glide bait in and around grass or rocks, or even get it around docks, and you can get some really big bites. And again, this time of year, it's funny because you'll be fishing different stretches, and one minute you're catching, you know, three and four pounders, the next minute you can be catching an eight or a nine. It's just, it's that time of year where in these same exact spots, these fish are just feeding, killing bait and they're feeding up where sometimes in the winter time it's not really like that where those smaller fish won't be really sitting with the bigger ones 
they kind of differentiate each other once they get to alert certain size and different time of year. Another killer bait can be like a multi-piece shad bait, like a bull shad. It's a great bait. A lot of dudes love throwing this bait pretty much year round. I know a lot of guys catch some really big fish on the bull shad. And it's pretty much the same exact thing that I'm doing with, you know, a glide bait or another multi-piece bait. Fishing it down rocks, I'm finding rocks where the bait are in, whether it be shad or the bluegill. Fishing it relatively tight and I want to fish it, you know, relatively fast as well to get that reaction strike out of those fish. Just because there is going to be normally a lot of bait in the area. So when you are fishing a lure like this, you don't really want it to swim slow because those bluegill are in and around the area. They're not, you know, freaking out. They're not doing anything. But once you throw in a lure and a fish is in that general vicinity, what it's going to happen is it's going to see your bait kind of freaking out. And it's going to be like, all right, this thing's freaking out. I don't know if my, my cover's been blown, but I've got to eat this one that's just going crazy or it looks injured. So they're always just going to just reaction strike your bait rather than the actual live bluegill. And this can also be a really good time of the year to fish deeper as well. So you can catch them shallow, uh, uh, absolutely. But a thing that a lot of guys aren't doing this time of year is they're fishing deep still. And you know, I like to fish obviously the mag draft, the 10 inch, I like to fish the rising sun, based with magnum, battle shads, all those different soft baits just in deeper depths around rocks or if I can find deeper grass or just you know, creek channel mouths that go out where the bait will funnel in and out and there's like a rock pile at the mouth of it. I'm fishing those areas as well because sometimes those bigger fish just aren't up there shallow just yet or it's just not the right timing and they're pulled off and they're feeding in some of that deeper water. So when I say deeper water, I probably mean anywhere from 10 to 30 feet of water and I'm trying to find some type of structure, whether it be a tree a brush pile or a rock pile, something down there for those fish to relate to, to ambush and sit by it just in case if those shad, trout, or whatever goes by their head, they can come out, eat that bait relatively well. And also, and basically all that you're doing is you're throwing out that soft bait past the structure, letting it sink down to the bottom, reel it back at a medium to slow retrieve, Make sure that you make contact with whatever's down there, whether it be a rock pile, a brush pile, or whatever. Don't be afraid to hang your bait up because that's how you're gonna get bit, is you're gonna be working through those rocks. You know, it's gonna be bouncing through. The fish is gonna come down, see like it's a bait fish or whatever going through. It's gonna come down and crush it and pin it up against that rock pile, or it's gonna ambush it around a rock. Or You know, there's so many different ways the fish will use a rock pile to eat a bait, but I've always noticed that if my bait is hitting the bottom, making contact, I'm gonna be getting a lot more bites than if it wasn't just, you know, 10 feet to the right, 10 feet to the left, or 10 feet too high. It's gotta be right down because it just makes those fish say yes to eating your bait a lot easier, where if they don't have to travel too far to eat it, they're just gonna eat it a little bit better. And another place that I really like fishing this time of year, if your lakes have them, it's docks. Docks can be a fantastic place to catch some really big bass. Some of you know, my favorite mag draft catches come from fishing docks. Just throwing this bait down parallel with a slip or a dock and those fish would just come out and crush it. And this time of year, it seems weird where I've seen it. Some days they want sun if it was like a really cold night and some days they just want to be in shade. You kind of have to play around with it, but it's that time of year where they're not actively always searching for shade. It's the water temp is colder. These fish sometimes literally just want to warm up. They get onto rocks or they relate to trees, something that holds a little more warm. So when you're fishing a dock, obviously I fish docks when it's got decent shade on it. So I'm always watching the sun, looking at whether it's a marina or just a very specific dock to see what angle of the sun and like how long the shadow of the dock is to see if it's longer or if it's shorter. And basically all I do with a soft bait, bomb down and just slowly reel it in. I'm not sinking it down to the bottom. I'll probably let it sink down five feet, start reeling it in. And we've caught in a lot of big bass doing it that way. It was a really fun bite. And so if you guys have docks, definitely give them a shot. You never know 
you know, every dock and every lake is very different. Some lakes that I fish, they only sit on docks during, you know, the morning or, you know, middle of the day. Middle of the day is obviously probably the best time to fish those docks because a dock will just give pretty much an unlimited amount of shade for those fish to always sit in where they're not always having to change angles on a rock because of the direction of the sun. Where you have a dock, the fish will just sit under and basically they can come up or down pretty much just straight up and down. They don't have to travel far distances to finally get down to deep water. It'll just go up and down. So if they want to just suspend out in 30 feet because they're chilling out and they don't want to eat, they're going to sit there. But then as soon as they want to eat, all they have to do is just come up and then a shad will go by, a trout will go by, and those fish are right there and they'll ambush using those docks. And what they will do is I've seen it is where they'll sit under a boat. Your bait's going to come this way. The fish are going to come out and just smoke it. And I'm telling you, you're going to get some really dope bites when you're fishing those docks. I just came back from Texas a couple days ago. We caught some really nice fish off of docks as well, and they were violent strikes. So it's a really good time of the year for fishing docks. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys learned a little bit about throwing kind of big, bigger swim baits this time of the year. Again, I've probably said it a thousand times, but this is a great time of the year to try and fish really any variety of swim baits to try and catch a really big bass. They are feeding on a wide variety of different things from shad, blue yellow trout, you know, crappie. It's just all over the place and they're really jazz juiced up to try and eat something. So it really all just comes down to timing and figuring out where your fish like to relate this time of the year. When the water's cooling down, whether that be in trees, rocks, grass, or docks, you're gonna catch fish. And we've caught fish really in all four of those things this time of the year on any given day. So it's always worth a shot to try fishing shallow, deep, maybe even into the night, early morning. Like there's just so many different times and factors that go into fishing these bigger swim baits. I mean, I was just talking about it with Ben the other day. Like there are just some days where those fish will just bite and some days they just don't. And there sometimes just feels like there is no rhyme or reason to it all. It's just how it is that specific day. So. I know it can be kind of daunting or intimidating to fish something like this, but I'm telling you, this time of the year, you definitely want to at least give it a, a shot for at least one or two days, and you might get some results that might surprise you, even at some of these urban spots as well. It could be the same thing, just maybe downsize your bait to like, you know, instead of a depth 250, a depth 175, or a smaller bull shooter or you know a six inch mag draft freestyle just downsize and you're gonna get pretty much the same exact bites when you're fishing at the urban spots as well other than that thank you guys so much for watching and peace out